I'm going to start making train news monthly. <laughs> nope. En France, de nouvelle ligne à grande vitesse a été récemment ouverte pour relier Paris avec Bordeaux et Rennes. En même temps, la SNCF a décidé de changer l'image de TGV, qui s'appellera désormais Inouï. Two new LGV lines, the LGV Sud Europe Atlantique and the LGV Bretagne Pays de la Loire, have opened in France, connecting Paris with Bordeaux and Rennes. These are the first new high speed lines in France since the opening of the LGV Est which connected Paris and Strasbourg and was opened between 2013 and 2016. Here is an updated map of the LGV network, the network of high-speed lines in France. These are, in no particular order, the LGV Atlantique, Sud Europe Atlantique, Bretagne Pays de la Loire, Sud Est, Rhone Alpes, Méditerranée, Rhin Rhone, Est and Nord. This is not to be confused with the TGV, which is the network of train services operating primarily over the LGV network, but also over classic lines and foreign high-speed lines connecting Paris and other French cities with other cities in neighbouring countries. The TGV service is now in the process of being rebranded into the new brand Inouï to match the existing WeGo and WeBus branding. Older single-deck Atlantique sets are also now being withdrawn and replaced with new duplex sets. TGV also refers to the specific type of train which operates the TGV service and can also be found on Eurostar, Talis, the Spanish AVE network and also in South Korea and the USA. Just thought I'd clear that up for you. Now that we've talked about France, let's return to the UK where the class 345 has now entered service on TFL Rail between Liverpool Street and Shenfield. TFL Rail was originally going to be rebranded into Crossrail in May 2017, however it will now be rebranded into the new Elizabeth Line branding in December 2018 when the main section opens. That means when the Heathrow Connect services are taken over in May 2018, they will also briefly be branded as TFL Rail. On the note of Heathrow not included in the original plan, it has now been announced that Elizabeth Line trains will also serve Terminal 5, which is currently only served by Heathrow Express services giving the line a whole new western terminus. The first MTR consortium has now taken over the operation of Southwest trains from Stagecoach. As part of the new franchise, they will be ordering a new fleet of Bombardier Adventurers, similar to those being introduced on the Elizabeth Line, London Overground and Greater Anglia. These will replace a number of existing trains, including the Class 707, which has only just entered service. These will most likely be transferred later on to Thameslink or Great Northern. We'll have to wait and see. The takeover occurred in the middle of a major blockade at London Waterloo Station, where platforms 1 to 4 are being lengthened. During this time, the former International Eurostar section was reopened temporarily in order to cover for the lost platforms. At the end of the blockade, they closed again, and they will reopen permanently next summer. The blockade has been a headache for South West Trains commuters, especially due to engineering overruns and also a train derailment over the summer. The new Alstom maintenance plant has opened in Widnes near Liverpool. Although there are no current plans for the facility to actually produce trains, this may change if Alstom wins the HS2 bid. CAF has also announced that they are planning to build a new factory in Newport in South Wales. The Flex project is a plan to turn existing electric-only Class 319 units into bi-mode Class 769 units, some of which will enter service on Northern Railway, where the, some of the existing Class 319s are already in operation. It has also been announced that Arriva Trains Wales is to take five of these units. The first Class 319 to be painted into the new permanent Northern Railway's livery has been unveiled. Meanwhile, the last of the Thameslink 319s have been withdrawn from service due to the arrival of new Class 700s. Some of which have moved to join the existing fleet in Northern, others are currently in storage. The Night Tube concept is to be taken to the London Overground. Starting this December, the East London Line will run all night on Friday and Saturday nights, joining the existing Night Tube network on the Piccadilly, Northern, Victoria Central and Jubilee lines. Wabtec have unveiled their newly designed power doors on Mark III carriages, 
This is to allow Intercity 125 HST sets to run on ScotRail and Great Western Railway after 2020 when power doors will become legally required. Mailrail, the secret underground railway in London which used to carry post, is now carrying the public for the very first time. As of the 4th of September, as part of the new Postal Museum, the public can ride around on the short loop in Mount Pleasant for the first time in what might be the world's only underground miniature railway. Will the public ever be able to ride on the full length from Paddington to Liverpool Street? Maybe. The first ICE4 units have entered service on the German high-speed network. The ICE4 order was the largest order ever placed by Deutsche Bahn and also the largest order ever received by train manufacturer Siemens. 170 trains will be delivered in total, replacing the existing ICE1, ICE2 and some old intercity fleets. Now, in the last episode, I did say I would be doing kind of a rant about the confusing mess that is the National Rail Ticketing System. However, because the writing for this was a little rushed and I want to do like a proper comprehensive review, I've decided I'm going to save it for another time. So instead, in this episode, I will be having a rant about the completely embarrassing situation that Network Rail and the Department for Transport have seemed to have gotten themselves into. Network Rail's continuing failure on the Great Western Electrification Project has now had an impact on future projects. It has been announced that electrification between Cardiff and Swansea will be mothballed, as well as Midland Mainline electrification north of Kettering. Meaning that the next Midland Mainline franchise will require the operator to buy bi-mode fleets. One particular embarrassment on Network Rail's part was their epic failure to electrify the Gospel Oak to Barking line during an eight-week blockade over the summer. It has been announced that the electrification will need a further two smaller blockades to complete, due to delays due to a number of factors, including deliveries of equipment that were the wrong size. Electric trains will not run on the Goblin until January 2018. The situation becomes even more complicated and shady in the north of England. Transport Secretary Chris Grayling has announced the mothballing of Northern Powerhouse Rail, formerly known as HS3, which would have created better links across the Pennines, including a high-speed branch to Liverpool, which is not being included in HS2. This would also give us a better link to Sheffield, which we actually had, and then it was closed in the 1960s for no particular reason. Days later, the same Chris Grayling announced his support for Crossrail 2, which, quite rightly, caused a little bit of outrage in the north of England, including from the newly elected Manchester Mayor, Andy Burnham. Even more conversely, there are still question marks over the electrification of the existing Manchester to Leeds route. Electrification between Oxenhope and Windermere has now been cancelled, meaning the branch is now doomed to be served by the either flex units for the next couple of decades. That's assuming the flex programme is even successful, which many cynics doubt. As for the Piccadilly to Oxford Road scheme, still no word. It seems as though the current government strategy is to ignore the problem until it goes away, which for frequenters of platforms 13 and 14 at Piccadilly like myself will find rather frustrating. Furthermore, the opening of the Orsal Accord this December will actually make the capacity problem even worse by diverting more trains through an already congested corridor. No need for new platforms? What the hell are the government thinking? One minor improvement in this area is that improvements to Transpern Express catering means that trolleys are now available until the airport, meaning that 350s no longer have to take up space for six minutes while the trolley is unloaded. As always, London is deemed more important in the eyes of the government. Northern's brief respite from strikes came to an end with a new three-day strike on the 28th, 29th and 30th of July. This was followed by another set of strikes on the 1st and 4th of September. The 1st of September 2017 also marked the official date of the 19 years later epilogue from the end of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. So whilst King's Cross was flooded with excited Harry Potter fans, the rest of the network was flooded with angry commuters. The Department for Transport continues their policy of doing nothing and letting the train operators fight it out with the unions, who in the meantime are blatantly lying to the faces of the public by asserting that this has anything to do with safety. Such is the current state of our railway. So yes, this video is late and my entire channel is in a slightly precarious situation at the moment. Uh, my sixth form routine is not favourable to spending a lot of time on YouTube and that is also coupled with the fact that I'm now dealing with the, what well, I would dub the post-GCSE backlog, 
which is even larger than the post DF Show 50 backlog I was dealing with this time last year. Therefore, what I'm going to do is continue to upload at a frequency of twice a week, but videos like this, so room based videos, the Dave Frankel Show and Train News, will not be as frequent as I would like them to be. So I will soon be working on the 70th episode special of the David Frankel Show, after which David Frankel Shows will be uploaded every two weeks. As for train news, I keep saying I'm going to make it monthly. <sighs> so I think I'm just going to do what I've been doing already, which is essentially uploading them every half term, which is closer to every two months than every month. If you really do want to have train news every month, then I cannot speak highly enough of Modern Railways, the magazine which doesn't sponsor me, but I feel kind of morally obligated to point out that that's where I get most of my information from, and also I'm genuinely recommending it because it's a pretty good magazine. On the topic of credit, I'm aware of feedback regarding the images I use in videos like this. Uh, I, the images I use are almost always either mine or are Creative Commons, however, because I've got feedback and also because my channel is growing and I want to take more responsibility with the content I create, I will now be taking measures to ensure that A, all the images I use are 100% sure that they are Creative Commons, and B, those that are Creative Commons, I will credit them, and you will have noticed the little credit caption type things in the images in this episode, which you might not have seen in the past. The next episode of Train News will be in October. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe. First off, let's talk about Southwest Trains. In a surprise mid-franchise deal, Stagecoach have sold off the franchise to First and MTR, who will radically overhaul the franchise and rename it Southwestern Railway from August 2017. You're not leaving that in there. Okay, okay. I won't leave that in there. If you leave that in there, it'll be the last thing you ever do. Uh, well, no, because you'll only know once I upload it, in which case uploading it will be the last thing I do. Here's, here's a pedantic one. I am. Hi, I'm David. Nice to meet you. What's your name again? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Sorry, who am I? Who is this weirdo? Who are you? What are you doing on my channel? En France, de nu... En France, de nouvelle... En France, de nouvelle ligne à grande vitesse est... En France, de nouvelle ligne à grande vitesse a re... qui s'appellera désormais Inouï. Oh, thank God, that was awful. Bretagne Pays de la Loire. 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 Crossrail trains. Webtech have unveiled their new Mark III power door scheme. This is to allow HS2. Only two days later, the same Chris Grayling announced support for Crossrail 2 in London. Right, quite rightly, causing. Even more conversely, there are still question marks over the electrification of the existing Transpennines. Right, Transpennines, idiot.